Hiya, it's Davin here at brewbits.com. Behind the camera, as usual, we've got James. Say hello, James. Okay, today I thought we would brew up some red currant wine. Now, I haven't brewed red currant wine for quite a while, and the last time I did, it was absolutely gorgeous. Okay, um, what do we need then for brewing up red currant wine? Well, we need three pounds of red currants, we need three pounds of sugar, we also need some yeast. Here I'm using all-purpose red yeast. We also need something to sterilize everything with, and I'm using sodium metabisulfate. Uh, we'll need some pectolase, some Camden tablets, and some yeast nutrient as well. As for the equipment, we're obviously gonna need a bucket, a demijohn, a jug for measuring our water. I've got a trial jar for use with our hydrometer. We're going to need a thermometer, a long spoon, and we're also going to need some muslin or a straining bag. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pour our red currants into my bucket. And now, Ooh, that was heavier than I thought. We're going to pour on eight pints of boiling water. Number eight. Okay, going to give this a good stir. Back to you then, James. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the lid, we're going to pop the lid on, and we're going to leave this for seven days in the corner of the room. Um, that will allow the fruit to release all its lovely juices. Right, see you in seven days. Hi guys, uh, it's been for you just a few seconds, but for me, been a whole week since uh, I left you and uh, our red currants have been sat in our gallon of water and you can see there's a little bit of mold come on the top but we're not going to worry too much about that because I've done a little bit of preparation here I've got a um, straining bag or you can use some muslin and what we're going to do is nice and gently pour our red currants in if you see the colour of our red currants, they're no longer red, they're pink. And we got gorgeous red liquid. Right, I'm just going to leave that to uh, drip for a few minutes whilst I have a good sip of my trusty cloudy cider. Our red currants have had a few minutes to rest and uh, all that lovely juice to drip out. Wait, 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 got it. Feel free to give them a little squeeze because there might still be a few, quite a bit, quite a bit of juice still in them. Up. I think that will do. What we need to do now is we need to take three pounds of sugar and that needs to just go in. Like that. And we need to give it a good stir. Okay, can you hear all that gritty sound as I'm stirring? Well, that is the sugar. You can feel it as well. And we really need to get all this sugar dissolved before we can move on to the next steps. And you'll know when it's dissolved because you won't feel any more of this grittiness and you won't be able to hear that rasping sound. We're stirring the red currants now and I've dissolved all the sugar in. So what I've done is I've taken a sample in my trial jar and I've popped the hydrometer in and it's given me a reading of 1.100. Now that's telling me how much sugar is uh, currently in it. But more importantly, what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to take another specific gravity reading and that'll tell me how much sugar is left in it. And then from that, we can do a simple calculation and it tells us how much alcohol we've got. But from this colour, you can tell already this is going to be a 
gorgeous rosy. Anyway, not waste that. Back in it goes. Okay, a couple of other things we need to add into this. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to add is some peptidase. Uh, some places you'll see it called peptic enzyme. And it's just a white powder. Come on in, James, have a look at this. And we're just going to pop in a rounded teaspoon. And simply pop it in like that and stir it in. So what pectinase does, because we use boiling water on our fruit right at the beginning, um, fruit contains peptin. And fantastic if you're making jam and you want to set the jam, perfect for that. However, when it comes to wine making, pectin can create a haze. And this haze makes it all look murky and everything like that. And you can't clear it, so you end up putting a bottle of wine on the table which is murky and just doesn't look quite right. Tastes good. Just don't look quite right. But the pectinase will help stop that pectin haze forming. Okay, a couple of other things we need to add. We need to add some yeast nutrients. Um, basically, I'm here, I'm using uh, what we call vitamin B1 tablets. And we like to keep our yeast healthy, just like you take vitamins while our yeast need them too. And what we do, I pop them on a teaspoon. Ooh. Pop them in between, two spoons, give it a bit of twist and a little bit of a, a jiggle, and it crushes. And in that goes as well. And we give it a stir. Okay, and the last important thing we need to add is some yeast. And here I'm using a sachet of all-purpose red wine yeast. Sprinkle it on the top. And give it a good stir in. All we're going to do now is pop the lid on, and this is going to go into our warm cupboard at about 20 degrees. So, this is where the thermometer comes in. This will allow you to make sure that your temperature around the bucket is about 20 degrees. Um, what we're going to be doing is for the next three days, we're going to be going into our warm cupboard, we're going to take the lid off and we're going to give it a good stir. After the three days that are up, we then put the lid back on. Again, like you saw me do, just press down both sides and we're going to leave it in total for seven days. So for the first three days for the next week, you're going to stir it and then for the next four days, you're just going to leave it covered for it to do its thing. Our red currant wine has had a week in my warm cupboard. Uh, remember for the first three days we've been giving it a stir each day and then for the last four days we left it to do its thing. Well, it's done its thing. It's a gorgeous pinky red colour and now it's ready for the next bits. For the next bits we're going to need a siphon and we're also going to need a demijohn. Now, I've sterilized in uh, my demijohns and my siphon. In the bottom of the bucket here is going to be some sediment. And on our siphon, you'll notice, come on in James, have a look at this. I've got a little cap, looks like, at the end and that pops off. And this is our sediment trap. And that's going to help prevent getting any sediment into our demijohn. Quick look at this, James. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to plunge it down too far. You just want it just below the line. So you, uh, just below the level. And then you need to then give a good suck. And then down into the demijohn. And let it fill up. So we need to take the wine up to the top of the shoulder and the bottom of the neck, somewhere around about here. Do it. The next thing we need to do is to prepare our airlock and you'll need a rubber bung with a hole in it and you'll need an airlock and in we go and marry together beautifully. Now come on in James have a quick look at this because you'll notice in the bottom of the airlock I've got some fluid 
and that's a sodium metabisulfate solution. And what that's going to do is help prevent any bacteria or any nasties getting into and spoiling our wine. It's also going to be an indicator to you that the fermentation has completed because what's going to happen now is the yeast in there, as it's been doing, is going to create some carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide has only got one way out, which is down through here, and it's going to bubble through. So, when you notice that the bubbles have stopped coming through, that's a good indication to show you that the wine's finished fermenting. And what you then need to do is check it with your hydrometer over three consecutive days and as long as the specific gravity stays the same, then you know it's time to rack off and start clearing your wine. Once you've racked it off and cleared it, of course you're then going to bottle it, and then it needs to sit in the bottles for about six months to, to mature. What we're going to do with this now though, is we're going to pop this back into my warm cupboard for about two weeks. It might take a little bit longer, it might take a little bit less. Um, and as soon as you notice the bubbles stop coming through, then it's time to check your uh, specific gravity readings with your hydrometer. So, back into the cup for about two-ish weeks. Hopefully then, after that, you're going to have a gorgeous uh, rosé wine uh, that's going to taste and smell fantastic.